Hello there. My name is Peter Thompson and I've been coaching golf now for over 40 years and coaching to me is the best and most satisfying part of the game. This DVD will be asking the question how far should the club go back in the backswing? I'm asked this question every day in my studio. This, this is my studio nice big airy studio, plenty of room and it allows people to swing quite freely. Uh, there are doors behind me when the weather is nice we open the doors and watch the balls go flying down the driving range. But The question I'm often asked is how far back should the club go? What it shouldn't do consciously is go back to parallel to the ground. Parallel to the ground to me is a complete nonsense some golfers with some golf clubs some of the time will definitely take the club back parallel to the ground but it is not I repeat it is not something that you should try and do the distance the club goes back depends on your body it will change from club to club automatically longer shaft the club will go back further all by itself. Shorter shaft, it will go back less far. So with 13 clubs in your bag, you'll probably have 13 different distances in your backswing, but it should not be a conscious movement. It will go back as far as it goes back. And that will depend on your body. For example, the club head, go back and your wrists are going to hinge. Well, if your wrists will hinge a long way, for example, they might be able to hinge that far, then the club in the backswing will go back further. If your wrists, for whatever reason, are very stiff, then you'll find that you can't hinge so far, so automatically the club will go back less far. Two of my pupils one plays off nine handicap, good golfer. His wrist hinge is about 60 degrees because he's got very stiff wrists. Another golfer playing off two handicap, he can hinge his wrists about 150 degrees. So there's two golfers, both good golfers, and the difference in their wrist hinge is 90 degrees. An average wrist hinge is about 90 degrees, but that's average, not necessarily normal. Your wrists will hinge as far as they will hinge. Hinging your wrist is part of the backswing. A longer backswing, less hinge, shorter backswing. Also part of the backswing is your arm movement. They basically move away from your chest, but you may have very stiff arm shoulder joints so you actually can't move your arms too far at all. Again, that will affect how far back the club goes. That's about normal. So your hands go back level with your face. Then turn round and that combined with the wrist hinge will take the club back X amount of yards. Also in the backswing, we have a hip and shoulder turn. And depending on how far you can turn your shoulders and hips, that will also affect how far back the club goes. So in essence, the backswing is a result of your body, how much hinge you can achieve, how much arm movement, and how much shoulder turn. If I swing back with my normal backswing, there's my wrist hinge, there's my arm movement, there's my body turn and the golf club now is not parallel to the ground. It doesn't have to be. It should not be any part of your thinking to get the club head back parallel to the ground. It goes back as far as your body will take you back. We will now go to my computer and I'll show you some brilliant golfers and we'll see how far back they take the golf club.
we will start off with some of my pupils. This young lady went down to plus five handicap, so clearly a brilliant golfer. She's now a golf professional, doing pretty well, soon being the top 200 golfers in the world. And that's how far back she's gone, based on her hip turn, shoulder turn, arm movement, and wrist hinge. Her name is uh, Liz Young, was Liz Bennett, and she married in 2013 one of my other pupils, Jonathan Young. Jonathan plays off scratch, has been less than that. Again, good goal swing, and the club now is nearly parallel to the ground because Jonathan has got more wrist hinge than this has. Their bodies are clearly different. If we go and look at maybe Tiger Woods now. This is a three wood. Tiger Woods won 40 major championships. Very, very talented. And the shaft now is almost parallel to the ground. He's not trying to do that. He's trying to turn his hips, turn his chest, move his arms back and hinge the wrists. And the result is whatever the result is, which in this case is almost parallel to the ground. Lots of grass coming out, hitting them all down and forward. I'm going to show you now two phenomenal good golfers. This is Byron Nelson. And Byron Nelson in 1945 won 11 tournaments on the trot. His average score for the year was 68.33 shots around. That was in 1945. Can you believe that? Absolutely amazing. His backswing, is there. Good turn, good shoulder turn, good hip turn, left arm, dead straight, good wrist hinge. 1945. I'll now move you forward to any else in the year 2004. Playing in the Masters, this is the 18th hole in the practice round. And I went to watch this. I filmed this shot myself, actually. I was a guest of Gary Walson at home, who'd won the 2003 Amateur Championship. So I took my camera along and spent five fantastic days there and got some great goal shots. And the one on the right is one of them. I can measure the angles for you. And the left arm to the ground and the angle of the wrist hinge on both golfers is identical, almost 60 are doing the same thing. So clearly their body shapes are pretty similar and their wrists work the same way and their left arms are both completely straight. So not parallel to the ground, phenomenally good golfers, parallel to the ground is gonna happen for some golfers some of the time, but please don't try and do it. We go back now to 1930s. I'm going to see Bobby Jones. This is John Jacobs, not Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones will be coming along any second now. Here he is. Let's just make him a bit bigger. And Bobby Jones in 1930, he won the US Open, beating all the golf pros because Bobby Jones was an amateur. He won the US Open for the fourth time. He won the US Amateur for the fifth time. He won the British Open for the third time and the British Amateur for the first time in 1930. He then retired from competitive golf. There's an arrow, 
pointing down the shaft. Um, the club has gone way past parallel and is actually pointing almost on the end of the tee in front of the ball. So he can do that because he has a phenomenal hip turn and shoulder turn. His left arm again is dead straight and a very big wrist hinge. That's his body. He can do that. I can do that. It is clearly not wrong because his record proves that it can't be wrong. Craig Osway. Watch it again. The club has gone back that far as a result of what his body can do. So, the club goes back as far as it goes back based on your body, based on your physique, based on your wrist hinge, based on your arm movement, based on your hip and shoulder turn. If you're playing golf in the middle of summer, uh, maybe you've got short sleeve shirt, maybe a pair of shorts, weather nice and warm, sun on your back, you will then be able to turn more and the ball will go further. A, because you've gone back a little bit further and B, because the golf ball and the air is warmer. That's why you hit the ball different distances depending on the temperature. Let that happen. Good weather, maybe a longer backswing than normal, the ball will go further. If you then then go up in cold weather, windy weather, wet weather, you might have a roll neck sweater on and two more sweaters and some waterproofs and two pairs of trousers and a hat and gloves, then because of all the extra clothing you will turn back less far. Again, let that happen. Your six iron, maybe in nice sunny weather, might go 170 yards for an average man and in the winter you might lose 30 yards off that. It doesn't matter because all the clubs in the bag will be going back you're going back less far with all the clubs, so you hit the ball less far as well. So it's not that important, as long as you realise that the ball is going to go less distance, with less movement, with more clothes on. So there's lots of permutations there. Your body, your wrists, your arms, your turn, how many clothes you have on, how warm the weather is. So let the club go back as far as it goes back and then you can hit the ball and it will go a certain distance. Once you know the distances then you can play golf. So the club goes back as far as it goes back which is maybe not the answer people want. They want to have a definitive answer but there isn't one. There simply isn't one. Everybody is different. Everybody is different. Lots of clothes on, less clothes on it will go about more or less. It will go about more or less depending on the club. And you can't simply have a definitive answer as to how far back should the club go. It goes back as far as it goes back. So practice hinge, arm movement, hip turn, shoulder turn. And my backswing, I'm often told is a three quarter backswing. And I always say three quarters of what? It isn't three quarters. That is my full backswing with a six iron. Maybe with a driver. This is a driver with the same movements. Club head is longer. Club head's going to go back faster. Back a little bit further. I don't try and do that. It simply happens. This is a same principle. Shorter shaft, heavier head. Go back. Backswing automatically will go back less far. The important thing is that you are in control of the length of your backswing and don't try make it back more than you can do because if you do you'll go back and it will be completely wrong. For example, pretty good if I try and go back to parallel by bending my arm then that's pretty bad. It's your backswing, it's your body, try and work out what it can and can't do and then you'll enjoy your golf far far more because you're not trying to compete with 
other golfers just play your game golf is very individual and you need to be able to understand your game and try and go back only as far as you can physically go back I hope this helps you understanding of how far you should go back but the clear answer is there is not a definitive answer you'll only go back as far as you can go back thank you for listening thank you very much